We were made to consume food, but food was never supposed to consume us. I'm so excited that you've decided to join along this six-week study for Made to Crave, satisfying life's deepest desires with God, not food. A couple of things I want to mention to you. You have backstage access. That's why we're backstage now taping without the audience in, in the room because I wanted to give you something special. So each week I'm going to come to you with just a little introduction that's just for you, no one else. And a couple of things I want to mention. One is, do you have the book Made to Crave? And do you have the participant's guide, the little workbook? I don't want you to miss out on one morsel of this rich teaching, this great adventure that we're about to go on. So if you don't have those crucial elements, make sure to get them and do them along with this video. The second thing is each week, I'm going to be giving you one word. It's a special word that's going to sort of encapsulate all of our teaching. You can go to my website, lisaturkers.com, and you can download the word and put it up on your refrigerator. We also have some special Made to Crave magnets that you can order from Proverbs 31 Ministries, and you can find all of that out on my website. But this week, I want to share with you what the word is because you get to see it first. The word is empowered. And you'll see what that means. I can't wait to unpack the meaning of this word for you and why this is so crucial. You know, most of us feel very underweight spiritually and overweight physically. But when we tie those two things together, this will become one of the most significant spiritual journeys that you'll ever take with great physical benefits. But I think it's only fair I tell you a couple of things about myself right from the beginning. First of all, I'm not a size extra small. No, I'm not a nutrition and fitness expert. And I've never craved a carrot stick in my whole life. I just think you should know that right from the beginning. But I have discovered that it is possible, what has seemed so impossible in my life to get control of this food issue, it has seemed so impossible. It is possible with God. So are you ready? Are you excited? We're going to take this amazing spiritual journey and learn we were made to crave God, not food. I can't wait. God made you wonderful. Psalm 139 says, you are wonderfully and fearfully made. You are beautiful. No matter if you're a size zero or a size 30, you are beautiful just the way you are. But God loves you so much. He doesn't want you to stay in that place. This story that we're going to weave together over the next six weeks is a story, really, a story of my life, a story of a great adventure, a story of me deciding and discovering that I can be courageous enough to finally face this one issue of my life that I never thought it was possible to find victory in. How many of you can relate to this story? Often, I would wake up in the morning, and I would drag myself out of bed. I would go, and I would stand in my bathroom, and I would see that scale. And I would hope that overnight, somehow, the magic weight fairies came and stripped pounds out of my body. And I would look at that scale, and I would think, well, maybe if I just take every stitch of clothing off, it'll make a difference today. So I strip my pajamas off and I stand on the scale, hoping, wishing, then looking. Bummer. So I step off the scale, take my ponytail holder out, because surely that's what's adding weight to me today. And I step back up on the scale, hoping, wishing, then looking. Bummer. Ugh. 
I step off the scale and I say, today I'm going to do better. Today I'm going to make healthier choices. Today I am vowing that I am going to be a healthy woman and I'm going to make healthy choices. And I walk out into the kitchen and I'm just about to reach for that piece of fruit when my resolve melts like the icing on my daughter's cinnamon rolls that she just pulled out of the oven. Why can't I indulge in those cinnamon rolls? They look so good. They must be good, right? And so just, just one, really it can't hurt that much. And so I take one and well, I've already eaten one. I just need maybe a half more and I can't leave that other half sitting in the pan. So then I eat two and then before I know it, I sneak and eat my daughter's leftover one. So now I'm, I've eaten three and I've totally blown it and it's only breakfast time and I'm such a failure. This is such an unfair struggle. Why can't I indulge? Why can't I eat the things that I want to eat when I want to eat them? Why can't I indulge? It's not fair. Indulge. What is the meaning of that word? Indulge means to take unrestrained pleasure in something. And any time we take unrestrained pleasure, there should be a red flag that goes up in our mind for the character of God. If we are Christians, we have God's fruit in us, evidence of God's character in us. And one of those characteristics tucked in there with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness is self-control. Unrestrained pleasure means that we take extraordinary measures of pleasure in an abundance that was never supposed to be ours. Is it wrong to find pleasure in food? Absolutely not. God made us with five senses, and one of those senses is taste. And taste is good. Taste is fun. As a matter of fact, we find out that when we go to heaven, we will be invited to a great banquet where we will feast without worrying about calories. Can I get a praise Jesus on that one? <laughs> but while we are here, to take unrestrained pleasure in things is to allow food, allow our thoughts of food, allow our cravings to start waging a war in our body. Because you see, any time that we take unrestrained pleasure in something, it feels good in the moment, but oh, those guilty feelings, they do come. And we, we feel so discouraged and we feel so defeated and we feel so disabled. We feel like we'll never be able to walk into the kitchen and not have our resolve melt like the icing on those hot cinnamon rolls, right? God's girls are not supposed to feel defeated and discouraged and disabled when it comes to finding victory with Jesus. I love this verse. <clears throat> in 1 Peter chapter 2, now don't panic as we go through this study these next six weeks. If you don't know where the verses are, I give you permission to look in the table of contents at the beginning of your Bible and find the page number. But Revelation is back here, so just make a few left-hand turns and you'll find 1 Peter chapter 2. And if you happen to have the same Bible as me, it's page 2260. Would that not be the biggest blessing if we all had the same Bible pages? Yes, it would. Okay. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Anything that wars against our soul then is in fact a sinful desire. It is a big deal. These aren't just little food issues. It is a big deal for God's girls to feel defeated in this area of food. Yes, God loves us just the way we are, but he loves us too much to leave us in this place. And you know what? The medical community is even picking up on how important it is to match our faith with our healthy eating pursuits. Made to Crave is not a how-to book. Stores are filled with diet programs, how-to get healthy. That's not what's missing. The missing link 
is having us find our want to. Having us find that spiritual and mental motivation to really make lasting changes. Not so that we can be skinny, but so that we can have peace in our mind and stop waging this war against our soul with unrestrained pleasures in food. Yes, even the medical community is picking up on the fact that we have to tie this physical struggle with a spiritual journey. Dr. Floyd Chilton, who teaches school at the Wake Forest University School of Medicine, says this, Your willpower is in constant battle with your genes and your calorie excessive environment. Often, your best efforts are no match for your genes and this environment, which is why so many diets fail so miserably. Willpower is not enough to bring about this change. Start by realizing you cannot do this alone. But if you are a person of faith, use that connection to help you change. And that's coming from the perspective of a medical doctor. You know, I uh, was reading in Matthew chapter 19 one day, and I was very excited to happen upon this story of the rich young man having a little discussion with Jesus. The rich young man was having this little discussion, and his issue was money. And so I was happy to read this because I thought, whew, that is one issue I do not have. So praise Jesus that I can read this and just enjoy Jesus addressing someone else's problems. So here's what I read. Jesus is talking to this rich young man in Matthew 19, starting in verse 16. The man comes up to Jesus and asks, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good, Jesus replied. There is only one who is good. And if you want to enter life, if you want to have an abundant life, then obey the commandments. In other words, Jesus is saying, follow the rules. Act like a good Christian. Be a good Christian. Do what you're supposed to do. The man replied, which ones, which rules? Jesus says, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, honor your mother and your father, and love your neighbor as yourself. And the young man has this look on his face, I imagine, a curious look. And he says in verse 20, well, I've kept all these rules, the young man says. What do I still lack? In other words, something is still missing from my life and that something feels pretty significant. I feel like I am lacking and I want to know why I'm following all the rules. If Mick Jagger and his second most popular rock song of all time had been invented yet or written yet, it would have been the soundtrack for this moment, this interaction of Jesus and the young man. Suddenly we would hear, I can't get no satisfaction. Because that's exactly what this man is saying. What do I still lack? Jesus, I can't get no satisfaction. Jesus answers in verse 21, If you want to be perfect or if you want to be whole, go sell your possessions, give to the poor, and then you will have treasure in heaven. And then you come and follow me. And when the young man heard this, verse 22, he went away sad because he had great wealth. This man was so full in a physical sense. And sometimes I think we read this and we go, whoo, good thing this doesn't apply to me because I'm not rich. When in reality, if we are full in a physical sense, this story absolutely applies to us. You see, in Mark 8:34, Jesus says, if anyone wants to come after me, if anyone wants to follow me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and then follow me. And it's that little deny yourself that's sort of a problem. You know, as a Christian woman, sometimes I would say to Jesus with this food thing, you can mess with my pride, you can mess with my anger, you can mess with my disrespectful attitude sometimes, but don't mess with my food because that feels like the acceptable Christian sin, right? Don't mess with my unrestrained pleasure. 
And you see, I would enter into these healthy eating programs and I would feel so deprived. I, I, would, I would feel angry that I had to be so deprived. I would feel like I can't get no satisfaction. Why is this my struggle? This isn't fair. Every time I would enter into a healthy eating program, I felt so deprived. And that's what this man was feeling too. He could not give up. He could not deny himself, so he turned and he walked away. Jesus, when I read this story, looked straight at my heart and said, Lisa, your issue is not money. Your issue is food, honey, and it's finally time to get a hold of it. Food isn't bad, but when you use it badly and it starts sabotaging your body and it starts sabotaging you, you mentally and it starts sabotaging you physically and spiritually, then it is a problem. But there is hope. Though this young man walked away, we are going to learn during these next few weeks how we can not walk away. We can make a different choice. We can make a courageous choice. Jesus says to the disciples in verse 23, I tell you, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And this man was rich with money, but we live in a place where we are rich with food. Amen? Amen. And so it's going to be hard for us too. Again, Jesus says, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And Jesus goes on to say in verse 26, this verse that I've heard so many times, but used so out of context. Jesus says, with man, this is impossible. With man, it is impossible for a rich man to sell his possessions, give the money to the poor, deny himself, and come and follow me. With man, that is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. You see, this verse is not just it's possible for God to make us live happy, wealthy, just wonderful lives. It is possible for us to let Jesus identify that thing in our life that we crave, that we desire, that we think about more than we crave and we desire and we think about food. That was the real issue with this man. That's why Jesus said, give it up. Because you crave and think about and desire money more than you think about me. And when I let Jesus peek in the depths of my soul and I let Jesus find my rawest place, my place of deepest vulnerability, I had to be really honest. The thing that I thought about, that I ran to, that I took comfort in, I found refuge in, I turned to, I depended on, it was food way more than it was Jesus. And it was time that a change had to be made. You see, with man, it is impossible to come to that kind of revelation. But with God, all things are possible. With God, it is possible to not feel deprived when we make these changes. This is not a diet program. This is not a how-to program. I am not going to stand up here and teach you how to cook healthy things and beat your taste buds into submission. I'm not going to have to because we're not going to just make external changes. We're going to let Jesus peek in the depths of our soul. And we're going to make some internal changes. It's going to be a great spiritual journey that's going to reap wonderful physical benefits. And we're making the choice. We're not going to feel deprived. I think if a woman can decide to go on a healthy eating journey and make this one click this one switch, when she looks at all the options before her at a great banquet or at a church potluck supper, oh, why does it have to be at church, right? Or at that birthday party or in the grocery store. If we can look at healthy options and make the healthy choices and not feel deprived, but instead feel empowered, everything will change. Everything will change. It'll just be this subtle little click that we make in our brain, this shift in our perspective, and it'll change us mentally, it'll change us spiritually, and it will change us physically. This is the point of Made to Crave. It's going to help you really learn how to not feel deprived, but feel empowered. 
you are a courageous woman. You are beautiful just how you are, but you are so courageous, you're going to let God mess with you, and you're going to be happy about it. These truths that we're going to learn, they are going to ruin us for good, and it's going to be good. I can't wait. It's going to be a great adventure. And the thing that we all, will all have to remember through this whole journey is that we were made to crave, desire, want greatly one thing. God, not food.